All right, so um, I think we're going to get started. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today is uh, stacking and namespacing the LSM so we can uh, make it available to containers. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about why and uh, what, it, what the LSM is even any, for most people may not know. Okay, so uh, it's Linux security modules. Uh, it's a basic infrastructure that the kernel holds and then there's a, uh, and it, it abstracts the, the kernel away, or the security away from the kernel so they don't have to worry about it so much because there's a whole bunch of different wacky ideas in security. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of different security modules, uh, SE Linux, uh, SMAC, AppArmor, Tomoyo, IMA, EVM, the load pin module, Yama. Uh, and there's a whole bunch more that have been proposed um, that are currently not upstream. Um, some of these would like to, you know, live by themselves, but others actually just want to live with the current LSM, the current modules that are there. Um, so why do we need to stack and namespace it? Uh, so containers, well, there, there's the, there's the, there is the, we talked about uh, coming modules, the proposed modules, some of them want to stack with the existing LSMs, but containers, uh, um, they end up using the host LSM. And they, that means they get, the, the, well, they use the host kernel, they get the host LSM, that means they get the host policy as well. So if you're doing like a system container like LXC, LXD does, uh, if you boot up your SUSE container under SE, uh, a, red, a rel system, SE Linux is gonna be enforcing on the host and you get no LSM in your container. Uh, it just fails to load. They have to block it. Um, besides, you know, the system container thing uh, we talked about, there's also app containers. Uh, so some things are doing sandboxing nowadays, and okay, more than some things, there's lots of things doing sandboxing, and they all do it different ways, and they use different technologies. Some of them actually want to use the LSM as well to help harden their sandboxes. Uh, Snappy is doing this, but for Snappy, when it goes over onto a RHEL or a Fedora system, uh, it, it's the sandboxing, the LSM parts based around AppArmor, it's not there, so it can't use it. Um, so let's, uh, talk about uh, what, how is the LSM set up a little bit? So basically in the kernel, we have uh, some hook points. Uh, they're scattered throughout the code and they just call into the LSM essentially. Um, in the security blobs, we have these security blobs. So in uh, data structures like the inode, the file, the task, the cred, super block, several others. There's this void star pointer that the LSM module gets to manage, allocate, give itself how much space it needs. Um, and then the LSM, when it registers, it sets up a list of functions that it, that are going to get called, and these these are get used by the hooks that are already in the code. Now an LSM doesn't have to register every uh, hook available. It only has to register the ones it uses. Um, and then there's also, uh, the infrastructure provides a few common interfaces, right? So we got the proc adder interfaces. Those are used for things, well, they're used by the various LSM projects, libs, like AppArmor and SE Linux use them, but also, um, common utilities like uh, PS, when you do PS minus C, it's actually reading the proc adder interface. Um, there's a security FS available to LSMs. Not every LSM uses them, um, but it's, it's common and shared. SO peer sec, so um, there is, uh, just like there's an SO peer cred call in the, um, sorry, brain freeze. Uh, uh, the networking um, file extensions, whatever, uh, ah, can't think of it right now. Anyways, you can use SO PeerSec to get a peer label, security label off of a, 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 a connection. And then there's SecMark, so like 
the IP tables has been extended so you can set a sec mark on things that the security module can use. Um, so let's, uh, it shouldn't be too bad, right? We, if we can stack this so we can get multiple LSMs running, right? Just running over the basics. So minor LSM stacking, right? How we, uh, we needed to start somewhere. And so we picked a case where there was some existing issues, right? Um, before this landed, before minor stacking landed, there was, uh, Yama had landed in the kernel and it was manually stacked. So in the hook points that it needed, instead of actually getting called, it was manually hooked into the code so it was additional hook points. Uh, capabilities were manually stacked by each LSM. Um, so that's what we started to try fixing uh, with, with stacking. So the minor stacking, what it does is it makes those hook points basically a list, right? Uh, it's an H list now, but. And so for, if a hook point's called, it's gonna iterate down every function on the list for each LSM that's registered. Um, so in this example right here, task PR control, SE Linux has a hook, uh, hook function registered, and uh, Yama does. Oh, I got SE Linux and SE Linux, that's an error. <laughs> it should be Yama and SE Linux. And then on the, uh, for a task set nice, just SE Linux is registered that one. Um, and so when you do these cook calls, it's only gonna call the functions out. There's only the overhead if you actually stack. If you don't, there's no extra overhead, or if you're not using the function. Um, this landed in 4.2, and it cleaned things up quite a bit. Um, so we covered most of what it there, is there already, but it, it's, it ends up splitting the LSM into two types. There's a major type or a minor type. So the difference is um, the major types can make use of the security blob on the, the object pointer, or they can make use of the existing interfaces that are shared. Um, if, if an LSM does either of those, it's considered a major. Otherwise, it's a minor, and you can have as many minor LSMs as you want, only one major. So you can stack SE Linux and Yama, or Smack and Yama, AppArmor and Yama, but you can't stack SE Linux and AppArmor. Um, not that you really want to, at least not for a system policy. Um, so, Let's try, so the, the next goal is to make it so that every LSM can be stacked, so we can get rid of this limitation, right? Um, is it useful? You know, some people complain, why would I want to stack SE Linux and AppArmor on my host, you know, my, my, my system? And there is a valid complaint there, right? You don't want to have SE Linux policy and AppArmor policy both running at the same time, confining everything, it, it would get to be a mess. But that's not, necessarily what we're trying to do. We're trying to make this more useful for new LSMs so that they can be more flexible in what they use. So for LSMs not designed to be total system LSMs. And we also want to make it so uh, an LSM that is used for a container type situation or sandboxing applications can be used selectively, right? Um, and so yeah, it is useful. And it's not easy. So blob management, what do we do there? This is probably the simplest part of it. The LSM takes over, so the inf infrastructure takes over. It. It's allocating and deallocating the blobs. Um, LSMs are gonna set, th they, the size gets set, set at registration. So when an LSM registers, it registers the size it needs. Uh, this is an optimization, so it doesn't have to do, there's not an extra layer of imp pointers and, allocations done. Um, so it just, it all put together in one big blob and each LSM when they register is get an index of where they exist in the blob. Um, it's just an optimization. It still basically works the same. Each LSM is just looking at its specific piece of the blob. Uh, sec IDs, unfortunately these, these are kind of a pain. Uh, they exist in the kernel, they're used in the uh, networking and uh, auditing stack areas. Uh, they're, uh, 
they're basically like the security pointer, except for we're going to cram it into a 32-bit integer. Uh, this is really inconvenient for stacking uh, for any generic multiple use, because now this 32-bit this integer has to be mapped somehow, right? Uh, worse, we can't divide it up. We can't just say each LSM gets six bits that's registered or 12 bits or whatever, because different LSMs have already divided that security ID up and the bits in that security ID up. ID up. Um, and some LSMs actually expose some of these to user space. And so they can't change those because that would break the user space interface. Um, also, even if we'd like to have a security ID be a void pointer, uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, because this networking stack is very sensitive to size and cache lines, they won't extend the 32 bits to 64. And so we are stuck with it. So what do we do? Uh, so the LSM infrastructure, infrastructure again is going to take over. It has to build a mapping betw between uh, the tuple that is the registered LSMs each view. They register their, you know, they put in their security ID for each on the hook calls. And then it maps it to and creates a mapping for its own internal SEC ID. And then that is used at the system level. And then it's passed, when it's passed back into the LSM, it unwraps it again and passes just the SEC ID uh, of, for that LSM. It's a pain, but it's what we have to do. There's, so there's extra overhead here. Uh, but again, it's only when it's used. Uh, if it's not used, if a, an LSM's not using that part of it, you're not going to get the overhead. And it has lifetime issues. Uh, this is something that is, is a work in progress and needs to be worked on still. So the SEC IDs, when they were conceived, there is no it, no concept of a SEC ID coming in and being you know tra tracked and then being freed. It's just an integer, right? And so uh, it's possible that these things they get stuck on network packets and they exist beyond the structure that sent them. Say the socket, right? So that if the socket sends a packet, that SEC ID gets on the packet and it goes into the packet and it goes into the system. It lives longer than the socket. The socket such, such shuts down. There's no ref counting or lifetime management on these things. So that's still an issue to be resolved. Um, thankfully, SEC IDs actually don't roll over that often. Uh, so the mappings aren't too bad. Um, another problem is uh, shared interfaces, right? We have those shared interfaces we talked about before. These are user-facing interfaces, right? So if you change proc pit adder, not only do, does existing code break that expects to use it, but also all these useful utilities like PS minus Z top that use it, uh, they don't work correctly anymore. And because they're not part of, the, say, an LSM project, they may be harder to update and get to move to new interface. Um, so PeerSec, that's the one that uh, you use on the socket, sock options call to get the socket uh, peer label. So how do we do go about fixing these? Well, we can define new interfaces. That's all well and good. New code, new libraries can use that. But again, the old code's not going to use them. We can virtualize the old interfaces. So the idea being here is that the old interfaces were never designed and never used with multiple LSMs. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that there's still just a single LSM. Uh, when, a, when, a, when a task is running that's using these interfaces, it's really only interested in one thing. And so we, we set up a, a default or display LSM, and that's what's going to get chosen, uh, the LSM that's chosen to put its information on that interface. Uh, and then there's an, an interface added that can be used to set that. So for AppArmor, you could use the AA exec call and set that display LSM, and then the, the, the ap application that's called would see AppArmor as the LSM in the stack. Uh, well, it wouldn't see a stack at all, but it just see that LSM. Um, there's some other problems with networking. Uh, SecMark, again, that's a user space interface. Uh, IP tables uses it. Uh, currently, it's only SE Linux. 
Uh, it wasn't designed to be shared. Uh, there's no way to choose an LSM. Uh, it's only a set or read at the moment. Uh, no concept of composing. It doesn't handle bridged interfaces properly, uh, which is a problem for containers. It, it's tied to the network namespace and hence the user namespace, which leads to its own issues. So how do we fix this? Um, we can actually extend SecMark. It was set up originally to accept different LSMs, but not multiple LSMs. So it's easy to add new LSMs to SecMark. It's not easy to stack them. Um, what we need is we need to set up some way to either specify the LSM that is supposed to be used or uh, use the default namespace, kind of set it for the network namespace, just like we were talking about for PROC interfaces. Um, setting the LSM, so what you want to do there is, internally it actually maps to sec IDs and then back. So what you want to do there is when you, when you map the sec mark to a sec ID, you find out which LSM it belongs to, either because there's a set value or because, again, the default name, uh, de default display namespace. And then you only set that LSM's value and then you can map it back to the sec ID or uh, from the sec, to a sec ID and from the sec ID back into a, a sec mark. Uh, it's a mess, but it can be done. Um, There's still a little bit of work around the namespaces that need to be done. Um, packet labeling. This is a little worse. So by packet labeling, we mean Cypso, Calypso, XFRM. This, this takes the packet, uh, puts the security label on it, and carries it out across the network. These actually can leave, leave the, the machine, right? Uh, they can travel out to a different machine. There's no real way to deal with this. There's no mapping you can do on your local host and then expect the foreign host that you're sending the message to to actually ma reverse that mapping. Not reasonably anyways. I mean, you could create mappings, send them to the foreign host, have it receive them, update its stuff, and then take the packets. But it's, it's not possible. It's just not practical. Uh, so the solution there is either you give it the, the packet labeling to a single LSM, if it needs it, it, tries to register for it, it can get it or it can't, and then it, it's the only one that gets to use it. Or the impractical solution is every LSM have to, that's using it have to agree on what the label is. Again, I said it's not practical because that's not under the control of the LSM. These LSMs have policy that authors create and load, and so it's, not just the LSM itself, but the LSM policy that would have to be in agreement. And everybody gets to change and modify their policy. So really, it's one LSM at a time on those. So how close does this get us? So the current stacking patches get us to this situation. We can boot a, si a system with SE Linux, Smack, AppArmor, other ones all enabled, and they come up. Um, you got to be careful on how you bring up your system doing this because uh, the current state of things, it can break boot because different parts of the boot on different systems expect different LSMs, right? So say on Fedora, they have some things in their boot checking if SE Linux is enabled. It looks at the stacking and says, hey, SE Linux is enabled because it's not using the shared interface to actually check that. And then it says, okay, SE Linux is enabled. Now I'm going to hit the shared interface and do some things because that's, that's the way my libraries are set up. And if it's not set up as the default display LSM on... Uh, S, uh, Fedora or RHEL, then things break. System D goes, blah, SE Linux policy failed to load uh, or it failed to enforce something and you don't boot. Um, same thing on Ubuntu or SUSE if you're running AppArmor. 
the app armor code uh, in, in the boot sequence is looking for, it says, hey, app armor is enabled. And then it starts looking at the interfaces and it'll say, hey, this failed to load, this failed to load, and that can break your boot. Uh, often it, they break in different places, it depends what parts of the system you're running. If you're running a, a network, the network will fail to come up. Same thing with SE Linux. If you're running a GUI, the GUI will fail to come up. Uh, <laughs> Depending on how you break it, it just might die really early. You might get to a, a recovery console. But you got to be careful with it still. But it can be done. Um, but still, this isn't very useful for containers, right? Because every task on the system, including the container, has all the LSMs that are in the stack uh, applying policy to them, and it's from the host. So the stacking's not enough. It, it gives us the ability to call into different LSMs, but LSMs need to be namespaced. Um, uh, the problem is LSMs don't want to be namespaced, at least not in the traditional sense. Um, imagine you're an SE Linux admin. You'd be really unhappy if all someone had to do is start up a container with a different LSM as its default to, pass, to bypass SE Linux policy, right? Any LSM is that would, would not like that, actually. So by namespaced, we don't necessarily mean uh, that you're getting a completely different confinement. So these LSMs, when we talk about namespaced, they have to have a way to, to apply a host policy. And if you have a namespace, perhaps stack that with a system policy, or the, the guest policy. Um, Good thing is LSMs are working on it. Uh, this has been slow. It's taken years. Uh, but where we're at right now is IMA has patches out there to, uh, to namespace its policy. They floated some RFC patches about IMA audit. Uh, they're still working on what they're exactly going to do on their interfaces. Uh, they're planning on landing things in stages, so it's not going to be ready for a while. Uh, SE Linux in October opened up discussions, email on their mailing list about how they're going to handle namespacing. Um, they need to work. They, they need to work through several things. They need to remove a whole bunch of global state and fix up in some internal structures, stuff like that, before they can even get to their namespacing. Uh, Smack has had patches on the list for a few years now, and they do have some per process rule stuff inside them as well. Uh, Smack is waiting a little bit on what to do with namespacing, partly because Casey is actually focused more on stacking than he is on making Smack namespaced at the moment. Oh, and audit, well, uh, it's a work in progress. I'm sure you've seen things about audit IDs or perhaps using P tags. Um, I know the audit people would love audit IDs. Uh, they're not what we would at, an L at the security community would like to see because they're not as flexible. Uh, P tags actually need stacking. And uh, it would help audit as well. Uh, we have audit issues right now. Uh, SE Linux, App Armor, uh, a couple other LSMs call into the audit layer and we can't tell it where our messages should go and stuff, right? Uh, the exception is AppArmor, which is right now fully namespaced, uh, has virtualized interfaces, and it has internal stacking. Uh, it does have a few issues around system namespaces, uh, limitations, and a few interfaces, actually, minor interfaces haven't been virtualized yet. Um, so remember, remember this, when I said it's not very useful to containers yet, well, that's, that's a half-truth. Uh, because AppArmor is namespaced, you can use this right now, if you apply the stacking patches, you can use this with AppArmor to do limited forms of stacking. So you can bring up, say, a Fedora system with an SE Linux and bring up a SUSE container running App Armor or an Ubuntu container. And so what happens is uh, the container creates a App Armor policy namespace. It sets the default display LSM to App Armor. It then sets, launches the container. Uh, the, the, 
Okay, the container sees itself as, uh, the guest container, whatever, sees itself as running under app armor. It never sees SE Linux, so it doesn't have problems, and it just applies itself. The SE Linux policy at the host is getting applied, and on Fedora, what we have to do is we have to be very careful about what policy we bring up on the host. Uh, easiest is just to leave all the host policy in the unconfined state for app armor. Uh, and just leave it so it's, you don't see it. The host does, pretends app armor is not there. It's just when you make that switch of the display LSM. Sadly, I do have a demo of this, but I haven't fixed it from when I broke it trying to do the reverse where we brought up app armor and put SC Linux in the container. Uh, I just didn't have time to fix it. So with that, we're about 95% of the way there. Uh, we still have some problems. There's some agreement in, between the LSMs, right? Like AppArmor, SE Linux, uh, IMA, they all have agreed that they want their namespaces separate from uh, user namespaces. Uh, so they want their na own namespace, but we don't agree on how it's supposed to be done. We have our own ideas. Every LSM is doing things differently. Um, we don't really have a consensus on containers in the kernel, which can be a problem from a, a, a infrastructure point of view for setting this up. So again, the approach of every LSM doing its own namespacing makes sense. Uh, there are issues around X adders having to be namespaced. That doesn't make the file system people happy because bigger X adders means slower systems. But if you're gonna stack things, that's just uh, what you need. Um, and we do need a few more hooks to get us all the way there uh, and a few common interfaces so that containers can set things up properly. So once every LSM is, is namespaced and we get these extra few interfaces, we should be there where you can do this with every LSM and stack things the way you need. Um, so this is not my work. <laughs> uh, the driving force behind the stacking has been Casey Schaeffler. Uh, he's been working on it and pounding on it for about five years now. Uh, uh, the AppArmor developers have been working hard to make things stacked and namespaced. IMA developers, SMAC developers, SE Linux developers, the LXD developers. So LXD actually can take advantage today of AppArmor stacking. We'll talk about that more later this afternoon in another talk. Um, and we have just a minute or two for questions. All right, I don't see any questions. Well, thank you for coming. <laughs> 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 <laughs>